to today's little workout. And today we are going to be focusing on hip flexor stretching um, or hip flexor flexibility. So hip flexors are muscles down the front of the leg and what they are designed to do is lift the leg up. Um, we also have um, a, a particular muscle which is attached to the lower spine on either side, comes through the pelvis and attaches to the femur bones at the top. And those two, those muscles, called the psoas muscle in particular, can cause a lot of issues in the body. Um, so if you tend to sit a lot in your job or drive, and you tend to suffer with lower backache, it's usually the psoas muscle that is causing these issues. So we're going to be working on stretching these off today. So um, we're going to start in standing. So if your balance is a little bit dodgy, then just prop yourself up against a wall or be near a wall. I'm not too focused on the balance today, so it doesn't matter if you're going to lean against anything. But all I want you to do is just start bringing one knee up to the chest and then the other leg. Um, Different ways you can hold. Some people like to hold the front of the leg or back of the thigh. Okay, experiment because they do feel a little bit different. And then my left arm um, is not my best balancing leg. What I want you to also start noticing is when you lift the leg, does the other leg want to bend? So like I know when I lift my right knee, the more I try and lift it, the more that left knee wants to bend. So now that's already telling me that hip flexors, somewhere there's an imbalance. It's not so bad on my left side. So, and what we're doing here is we're also just warming up those muscles before we come into a little bit of a stretch. Like I said, if your balance is wobbly, I'm not really after improving balance. It's a good idea if you can. But if you are spending most of your time doing that, then lean against a wall. Good. So, um, And just the other thing you might want to be mindful of is this. So you're not going into that kind of position. So think of bringing your leg to your shoulder. Good. And just the last one. Good. And then relax down. So we're going to come onto um, the floor. So if you've got a cushion at home, um, obviously because I've got all the blocks, I'm going to use the blocks. So I'm just going to have a Pilates block under my bum. You can use a, like a cushion from your sofa. So the higher the blocks, the more intense this will be. So... Again, if you are one that sits a lot for your work or whatever reason, um, start with a low one because it might be enough and then you can always add more. So we're going to come onto the back and then come into that position. So have your feet like mat width and then we're going to take the hands above the head. So we're doing a bit of a passive stretch here. So we're not really going to do much. We're just going to let the body open up for a little bit. So when we're sitting all day, if you think of the distance between the thigh and my hip joint, when you're sitting all day, these muscles, and I'm going to use the term shrink. They don't technically shrink, um, but just to make it more understandable for your mind, uh, they shrink. When, we come, when we're in this position all the time because the body doesn't need the full length of the muscle. So when it comes to straightening the leg, it's like, oh, there's no length there. And then that's what's pulling your back out of position or causing the backache. So this just gives the body a chance to like open up the space and like give the chance for the muscles to have a nice big stretch. And the nice thing is you can do this so anywhere, not in your queue at Tesco's, but you can just lie on the floor at home for nine, five minutes, ten minutes. It's a really nice relax. Have your feet wide and you're just going to start to roll your toes in and out. And start to pay attention to what it feels like in your body. So I know that when I roll in, my left knee wants to lift 
up a little bit more compared to the right knee. And see if you can get your baby toes to touch the floor when you roll out. And I can feel that left one is pulling up. And when you roll in, can you bring your big toes down? Obviously, don't break your kneecaps trying to do that, but you're aiming for that direction. And you might feel some sensations in the hard part of the back of the pelvis. So you might be feeling the femur bones turning in and turning. It really depends on how body aware you are. Uh, but some people just can't naturally feel anything. So don't worry if you can't feel anything. Good. So I'm going to bring my hands down. Bring your legs back into like a normal position. And then we're going to bring the left knee into the chest. Like we did in standing, we're just in a lying down position now. So again, behind the thigh, front of the leg, doesn't really matter. And we're going to reach that right leg away. So... Be mindful that for some people, the more you try and pull that leg in, the other one pops up. So you land up in that kind of position. So you really want to focus on sending the back of that right thigh down as you pull the left knee in. Put your left foot down, slide it out. Bring your right knee in. And I know on this side in particular, when I try and bring that knee in, you can see my left knee is bending a little bit. So I've really got to try and put a bit of effort and I can feel a lot of pulling, which is a good thing. And then take it down. So we'll do one or two more on each side. Like when Paul does these, he's quite quick. I like to work a little bit slower because I really like to feel what's going on inside my body. Good. So now I want you to choose the leg that was the most restrictive for you. So I'm going to go back to the right one. Just stay there for maybe two or three breaths, but focus on the other leg as well. And as you try and relax inside the hip, I could actually feel myself going, ee! try and relax in there. Good. And then relax your leg down. We're going to come off of the block. Roll onto your side and push yourself up. And we're going to come into all fours. Okay. So if you have got painful wrists, you can always come up onto the knuckles so that your wrist is in a straight line. You can have the hand slightly turned out. Or if you have got blocks or anything like that, you can put your wrists on blocks. Or you can even come onto your elbows. Or if you're in your living room and you have your coffee table or your couch, you can put your arms on your couch. So if you've got any sore wrists, you can do that. So the knees are under your hips, wrists and elbows are under your shoulders. So one of the big mistakes um, that often happens is people have their hands too close to their knees. So you can see where my hips have just gone back now. So we want to try and get those hips directly above the knees and then space between your hands and your knees as well. Check your, just have a look between your knees. Now, if you can see your feet, just move them to where you can't see them, okay? And now your head, I always say to the client, stop looking between your legs, you haven't lost anything there. <laughs> But you want to think of your gaze going more there to keep the neck in a nice straight line. So we're going to do what's called a cat-cow. Just a little bit of spine mobility before we come into some hip flexor stuff. So breathe in. Now when you exhale, I'm going to pull my pubic bone towards my heart. So I'm going to drop the tailbone down. And I'm going to try and bring the pubic bone towards my heart using my abdominal muscles. I'm curling up through each vertebra. Once I get there, I'm just going to relax the head down. I'll just hold that position for a moment. You need to be pushing up in between the shoulder blades. And now relax the back of your legs, your bums, and your calves. Okay? 
There's a lot of ways to teach this particular exercise, but for today, I just want to focus on waking up your abdominal muscles. So the more we can relax everything else, the more your abdominals have to kick in and they have to do the work. Now, when you breathe in, we're going to send the tailbone to the ceiling, curling through each vertebra. I like to have a little shoulder roll here and then send your shoulders down your back and lift your heart. So now we're doing a little extension in the lower parts of the back. What you're trying not to do, and I'm going to try and ex exaggerate it, <laughs> is you don't just want your tummy hanging on the floor. So keep the tummy engaged, so still pulling in the belly button. And now just go with your breath, so breathing out. And inhale. Exhale. And inhale. So don't overthink this last one. Good. And then we're going to come back to the center. So we're going to come down into a lying down position. And we're going to do, just need to move the microphone. Uh, what we're going to be doing is something called single leg kicks. So I'm going to go through this slowly because it's quite technical. Just didn't realize this mat is so short. So the first one we're going to do is the baby version where the head is going to be down on the floor. So your arms are going to be out to the side, like in that position over there. Okay. Now, if you are lying there and your bum feels like it wants to stick up, just have the legs a little bit wider. Um, so the closer your legs, the more challenging, the wider the legs, the easier. So the first thing you're going to do is pull the belly button away from the mat. So I'm just going to look up while I'm talking. So pull the belly button away from the mat. And then we're going to send the pubic bone into the floor. So there's a little bit of bum engagement there. So now what I want you to do is start to squeeze your legs and reach your legs away. So we're activating those legs now. This may not be available to you, but it may be available to you. See if you can actually start to float the legs off the floor. That happens with the bums. Okay? If you lie there and your legs are not coming off of the floor, don't worry. Even if you are still trying, you're still activating the muscles, okay? And they'll get stronger and stronger and stronger, and eventually you will be able to do that. So even if you're lying there and your feet are touching the floor, I'm still squeezing, so don't be put off by that, providing you're trying. So now I'm going to bring my right heel to my bum, and then I'm going to take it back down, and left heel. So if your legs are off the floor, we're trying to keep those knees off the floor the whole time. But if you've got tight hip flexors, so those muscles I was talking about, and I'm going to exaggerate what might be happening in your body, when you kick one leg in, you might get something like that happen with the hip, or you might get a rolling out. Okay. So what you really want to focus on is these hip bones, they want to stay anchored to the ground. So sometimes I say to people, put your hands there and push your hip bones into your fingers. So when you start to bring your feet in, you can feel if those hips are moving. So this is the more gentler version. But you're trying not to wiggle left and right. So your bum is going to stabilize the pelvis. So you've really got to squeeze your bums, okay? So there doesn't want to be this rocking forward or back or left and right. The only thing that moves is that knee joint. Good. So relax down. Just push yourself up. And then we're just going to do those little cat cows again. So back into all fours. So breathe out. And inhale. Exhale. And inhale. Good. Let's make that a little bit harder. 
So this time we're going to work in a low sphinx. So you can see my elbows are under my shoulders. What we're actually going to do is take the elbows more forward. So my rib cage is touching the floor. Now this gets a little bit more challenging because there's more to think about. So if you see the space between my shoulders and my ears, what I'm trying not to do is hang in there, like just relax. The whole time I'm pushing my heart away from the mat. Okay. And then the legs is the same. We're going to push the pubic bone into the floor. Reach your legs away. If they can come up, great. If they can't come up, great, as long as you're trying. And then we do the kick again. But you can almost see that I've got no weight in my hands. So the shoulders are down the back. Again, if you've got tightness, remember I've spoken about fashion stuff. If you've got tightness, you might find that the head is ducking down or something like that. So... This is what Pilates is, controlling every single part of your body. And yes, it might move, but if you're trying not to move it, then you are still innovating those muscles. Good. And then relax. Come back up. And you might actually start to feel, oh yeah, it's a little bit like I can feel on the right side it's getting a little bit achy. And that is the psoas muscle that I was talking about earlier. So if you have got a lot of discomfort right now, don't worry. Um, like unless you've had a back injury, it's normally your psoas muscle that's just, <laughs> he doesn't like it, but it's what he needs. Good. And the last little one we're going to do now, which is one that most people probably will struggle with, because we're asking the hip, that psoas muscle to be in a big stretch and it's not going to like it, um, especially if you're sitting all day. So now, my hands, my elbows are underneath my shoulders. For some people, if the elbows are directly under the shoulders, the hips might be lifting off of the floor. So we don't want that to happen. So if that's happening with you, just take your elbows a little bit wider, okay? Um, it might be that the spine is quite stiff or you might have some fused vertebrae at the bottom which doesn't allow you to be in that position. So you want to make sure your hips are touching the floor. So now when I squeeze my bum and I send my pubic bone, I can hardly get my legs off of the floor. You can see it's like... Uh, and then same thing. But I'm still trying to squeeze the bum. I'm trying to get the knees off the floor, pushing the pubic bone under, down... I'm sending the floor away from me. It's a lot going on. So I'm trying not to do, it's quite hard for teachers to do stuff wrong. I'm not doing that. Okay? It's like slightly exaggerated. Squeezing. Everything is working. It's like tense. And this is why Joseph Pilates never used to do many. Because if you're working hard enough, four or five and you should feel knackered. And then relax down, push yourself up. And the single leg kicks is often one, we're going to cat cows again, that causes cramp in the feet, in the calves, in the hamstrings. It's quite normal to get cramps with those ones. Good. So we're going to come into standing, so tuck the toes in at the back. Just take your time. Remember, if you are on your own, you don't want to faint. So, <clears throat> nice little stretch there. And then you can have bent legs as you roll yourself up. If you get dizzy, just bring your head down again. <sighs> Good. So, have your feet hip width apart. And nice little flump. Just loosen off that lower back. So maybe tomorrow, if you haven't done like exercise before and you're doing this, maybe tomorrow you're going to go, oh, it's a little bit stiff around the back. It's probably these <laughs> or the next day. Good. And then come back to the front. Good. Last big stretch. Take your hands up to the ceiling. Reach and reach and reach. Bring your hands down. And give yourself a little clap. So that was a very quick hip flexor stretch bit of glute work as well. Most people need some glute strengthening. 
Um, so, you know, in between the adverts, get down on the floor, whack a few single leg kicks out. Anytime you can incorporate these moves into your daily life is going to make your body a lot stronger and a lot more flexible and a lot more mobile, which is going to stand you in your older, in your older years. <laughs> Something like that. So have a good day. Bye.